So former President Barack Obama sat down with the Pod Save America guys and uh, weighed in on what's happening in Israel and Gaza. And in many ways, this is classic Barack Obama. Just absolutely classic vintage Barack Obama. Now, whether or not you interpret that as a positive thing or a negative thing is your decision to make. I know how I interpret it. Um, but let's listen to what he says here and we'll break it down. If there's any chance of us being able to act constructively to do something, it will require an admission of complexity and maintaining what on the surface may seem contradictory ideas. Already, I think there's a lot of debatable stuff in there, right? There's a very famous Michael Brooks quote where he, he says he's asked about uh, Israel and Palestine, and he effectively says, actually, it's totally morally uncomplicated. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. That's what Michael Brooks said. Uh, also, who was it? it was, uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates also. He came out and said a similar thing the other day. He was on Democracy Now. I think he visited the West Bank, and he came back and said, this is actually really uncomplicated. It's very familiar to a black American knowing what it was like in the South in the recent past to see what's going on in the West Bank, effectively an apartheid-like system. This is actually not complicated at all. So that's one um, line of argument. And then the other line of argument is, when you look at the entire history of the region, uh, when you go back to the first Zionists arriving in the region around like 1900 and you get the Balfour Declaration and it was uh, British imperial territory and then the British promised it to basically everybody and their mother. They promised um, Jews a, a Zionist state. They also promised um, the leaders of Arabia that it would be part of a united Arab state. Uh, they, they prom I think they even promised, they promised the French as well that that would be part of, or cer certain, maybe in Syria, there's so some parts of the region were probably, like, so when you look at the history of it, going back to 1900, all the way up to the Balfour Declaration, all the way up to the Partition Plan, um, and, and forward, it actually is, there's so many moving parts that it is definitionally complicated when you take in the whole of what happened in the region and how we got to where we are today. So those are both schools of thought there. And what's my takeaway from it? Look, I think they're both right. It, there's no denying that the history of it, certainly for the past hundred or so years, it is complicated. So many different competing interests, uh, you know, at play. But the simplicity, simplicity side of it is this. Barack Obama is making this argument at a time when innocent civilians are being slaughtered on a daily basis by Israel, right? There is a very phenomenally uncomplicated takeaway from this. That takeaway is, for the love of God, ceasefire, stop carpet bombing babies. And he doesn't even say that, right? He doesn't even say that. He does the classic, this is, I would describe this as Obama nuance trolling. That's what it is. This is Obama nuance trolling. It's like, oh, well, you know, both sides, uh, everybody's complicit. Um, and what are you going to do, man? I mean, we should probably like have conversations and make the world a better place. It just, it's too on the nose for him, and it's also not what is needed at this moment. Let's keep going. What on the surface may seem contradictory ideas? That, that what Hamas did was horrific, and there's no justification for it? And what is also true is that the, the occupation and what's happening to Palestinians is, is unbearable? And what is also true is that... There is a history of the Jewish people that may be dismissed unless your grandparents or your great-grandparents or your uncle or your aunt tell you stories about the madness of anti-Semitism. And what is true is that there are people right now who are dying who have nothing to do with what Hamas did. And what is true... Right? I mean, we can go on for a while. And the problem with the social media and trying to TikTok activism and trying to debate this on that is you can't speak the truth. You can pretend to speak the truth. You can speak one side of the truth. And in some cases, you can try to maintain your moral innocence, but that won't solve the problem. And so if you want to solve the problem, then you have to take in the whole truth. I don't know, man. Some of the TikTok activism right now, the TikTok activism that's saying, for the love of God, ceasefire, I think that's 100% correct. I think that's correct. 
I think this whole holier than thou bit, you know, about how oh, social media puts us in our silos and we talk right past each other. Yeah, that's generally true. But in this instance, talking about Israel's bombing campaign in Gaza, the people who are like, stop, are the ones who are right. It's just, I don't know why he can't just say that, right? I don't know why he can't just say, I'm for a ceasefire. That would make news nationally. That would put pressure on the Biden administration to do something. That would matter if he said that. But he didn't say it. He's not saying it. He's basically nuanced trolling. Oh, it's very difficult. Oh, both sides. Oh, it's like, and aspects of it are true, but you're ignoring the parts that actually are simple. Look, complexity is just when simplicity cuts in both directions. That's what, compl that's what complexity is. So, like he said, Hamas killing innocent civilians, that's actually very simple and very bad and wrong. And at the same time, the IDF bombing innocent people relentlessly, that's also very simple and very wrong. So when you take in the whole picture, it's complex because there's two simple things in competing directions, but you could still call for solutions, and he's not calling for solutions. Number one thing is, hey, stop the ceasefire. Number two thing is, hey, stop the occupation and the apartheid. If we can't agree on just those two things, we're not, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to argue with you because those two things are the most straightforward of all time. And you could say, number three, arrest all the war criminals. Hamas leadership, Netanyahu, by all means, let's go, go for it. But these things are simple, but they're actually debated hotly. And you then have to admit nobody's hands are clean, that all of us are complicit to some degree. I look at this and I- Who's more complicit? Obama. Look, his record on Israel is interesting. So he gave them a tremendous amount of money, tremendous number of weapons. Um, he gave them Iron Dome. Um, but he also did the Iran deal, with, which pissed off Israel. It pissed him off quite a bit, actually. Uh, on the way out the door, uh, he also had the U.S. abstain from a vote at the U.N. condemning the expansion of illegal settlements. So he's got kind of a mixed record. But this whole, like, wishy-washy, everybody's guilty, we all need to s sit down and hold hands and sing kumbaya and, like, work it out. No, there are some people who are more responsible than others. And not acknowledging that is, uh, bullshit. That's bullshit. And he knows that's bullshit, because he's smart enough to know that's bullshit. Think back, what could I have done during my presidency to move this forward as- Uh, you could have leveraged the aid that you give them towards ending the occupation- ending apartheid, maybe even going as far as sitting down and working out some sort of an agreement for a Palestinian state. You could have done it. By the way, there's a great Frontline documentary. You guys should all check it out. Uh, we were actually very close to peace. Very close to peace. And Bill Clinton, for all of his flaws, I mean, this guy was bad on most issues, but on this issue, he actually busted his ass and, and was moving it in the right direction. And he tried. If Obama tried as hard as Bill Clinton, maybe we would have actually gotten somewhere. But he didn't. As I tried, I've got the scars to prove it. But there's a part of me that's still saying, well, was there something else I could have done? That's the kind of Leverage the aid to Israel to get them to stop the human rights abuses. That's the most straightforward thing. We should be having, not just looking backwards, but looking forward. And, and that can't happen if we are confining ourselves to our outrage. I would- re Yeah, but sometimes outrage is justified. The outrage saying, hey, Stop bombing innocent civilians, cease fire now. That is correct outrage. With a very simple demand, which is accurate. And I don't know why... <sighs> Look. I don't know why it's so hard for him to admit. Yes, aspects of this are complicated. But also, there are aspects that are simple. Say the simple parts, too. But he doesn't do it. I'd rather see you out there talking to people, including people who you disagree with. If you genuinely want to change this, then you've got to figure out how to speak to somebody on the other side. Mm, I really don't. <laughs> I really don't like this whole, bro. Social media, bro, it's put us in our silos, bro. Nobody wants to talk anymore, bro. The much more direct way to get a better outcome, Obama, is if you came out and started campaigning for a ceasefire. If you were protesting with the pro-Palestinian protesters. If you called your friend Joe Biden, who barely knows where he is, and says, "We got to end this, and we got to end this now. We got to leverage the aid to Israel." You're in a very powerful position, and he acts like, well, you know, it's on Dave, who's marching in the street. You know Dave, the guy who works at Bennigan's? Are there any Bennigan's anymore? I don't know. Dave, the guy who works at Denny's? He needs to solve this by talking to his neighbor. No, that is, oh, God, it's so dumb.
It's so dumb. Listen to them and understand what they are talking about and not, and not dismiss it. Because you can't save that child without their help. Not in this situation. Nuance trolling, complexity trolling, um, both sides-ism. There are elements of it that are true, but overall it misses the mark. Because if you can't say the most simple demand right now and agree with it, cease fire, cease fire, cease fire, if you can't even do that, then you're being dense. Like, he's being dense on purpose, right? And he was president. He could have done a lot more. He didn't. His record on Israel was mixed, but mixed ain't gonna cut it for a settler colonial project that keeps expanding. So, here we are. Um, could have called for a ceasefire. Could have put pressure on Biden. Could have marched with pro-Palestinian protesters. Uh, didn't do any of it, and is doing his classic little Obama shtick. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.